recent years, governments have faced difficult decisions about where to cut public spending, so it has become extremely important for researchers to demonstrate the economic benefits resulting from research projects. Jonathan Haskell is Professor of Economics at Imperial College Business School. In 2009, he worked on Nestor's Innovation Index project with Gavin Wallace of UCL to co-author an interim report on the value of research. We were interested in finding out two main things. Firstly, what was the contribution to British economic growth of scientific research funded by the government? And secondly, what was the contribution to British economic growth of scientific research funded by British business themselves? To examine these questions, we had to gather quite a lot of data. We looked first of all for data on how much British industry spends on research, and that's readily available. There have been surveys on British industry spending on R&D for many years now, uh, and so we relied on that. To look at what the public sector spends on research, we relied on some data released by the Department for Business Innovation and Skills, uh, who gave us data on the total spending on the science budget. That's spending for universities, and spending on civil research, and spending on defence research. The authors used 20 years' worth of figures from the Department for Business Innovation and Skills to construct a new measure called Private Sector Total Factor Productivity, or TFP. The figures calculated in the study captured for the first time the contribution of intangible activities, such as new technology, knowledge, skills and design. What we found was a very strong relationship between public spending on research through research councils and subsequent productivity growth in the market sector economy. That is to say that after the public sector gave research councils more money to spend, there was an upward shift in productivity growth in the British private sector. And that's consistent with the idea that the fruits of that research, the discoveries that that publicly funded research had made, spilled over to the private sector, which then used them, commercialised them, and raised, therefore, British productivity growth. In 2010, David Willits, Minister of State for Universities and Science, cited Jonathan and Gavin's report when defending the government's decision to freeze the science budget. He argued that the report shows particularly strong evidence that spillover benefits seem to be greatest from the research councils, showing that research council spend is generating wider benefits across the economy as a whole. Our numbers suggest that support for the science budget is a very effective way of funnelling public money towards the wider economy. The spend on the science budget is currently about 3.5 billion, and our numbers indicate that that contributes around 45 billion to the wider economy. But what our work documents is that spending on the science budget generates good returns for the British economy more generally, uh, and that's an area where the government would do well to concentrate its spending if it wants to get more growth in the economy.